Welcome. Welcome to this presentation on um, Excel. Remember, what we're trying to develop your Excel skills and at the same time uh, teaching you uh, computations and calculations about accounting. So as I do this uh, particular Excel presentation YouTube, I'm going to be talking uh, out of two sides of my face at the same time. I'm going to be talking for a while about Excel, and then I'll switch over and be talking about uh, inventory calculations out of Chapter 5, and then I'll come back into Excel. So um, be sort of ready to flow with me back and forth on what we're, what we're looking at, and then um, maybe listen or take notes or examine as we go through. So the first thing I want to tell you is that this Excel lesson is um, on um, ATC 5-9 on page 309 and um, it's a spreadsheet analysis and this is very typical of the kind of management spreadsheet that a college graduate would be asked to prepare in whatever your major is. So if you happen to be in recreation and they want to know how much it costs you to maintain an inventory of basketballs and footballs and hockey sticks, you would have to set up the same kind of spreadsheet. If you happen to be um, a psych major and you're taking this class and you're learning how to be prepared to be a leader in a psych clinic, you're going to have to do spreadsheets just like this on um, clinical supplies and perhaps even some merchandise that you might sell to um, clients. So as we look at this analysis, you business majors in the, room, in the class will definitely do this um, with your uh, degree and line of work. So this is a, something that's a, an example certainly of a type of spreadsheet that you need to know how to make up and that we're using it for a retail operation but these Excel skills would be the same for you uh, no matter what. Now, um, one of the things that I've been doing is I have been slow to require you to do the logic of a spreadsheet. I've been patient with you to say, no, I'm going to show them the logic of the spreadsheet and then I'll ask them to develop it themselves a little later in the semester. So again this time, the problem says um, on January 1, 2013, the accounting record of Ginger's Boutique had the following balances, cash, inventory, common stock, retained earnings. During January, Ginger's Boutique entered into five cash transactions. So they purchased something, they purchased something, they sold something, they incurred expenses, and they paid an income tax. So they um, paid an income tax. Then um, the requirements say, set up rows 1 through 10. So if you look at this, uh, coming down the rows 1 through 10 um, of the following spreadsheet to compute cost of goods sold, ending inventory, uh, assuming FIFO, LIFO, weighted average cost flows. So you would be normally looking at a blank spreadsheet and you would be trying to think to yourself, how am I going to set this up given these instructions? And how you're going to be setting them up is the following. Now look at your um, spreadsheet that I have here on the screen. I have started putting your student name on it because it will help me a great deal if I'm looking at your name while I'm calculating the while I'm looking at these calculations. So I've been inserting that at the very top. So we're not really starting with row one because I'm taking advantage of rows one and two for your name. But on row three, um, the instructions are to compute cost of goods sold and ending inventory. So I'm going to, the first place I'm going to put in is I'm putting in cost of goods sold. And I'm putting it um, on row three and I'm putting it um, across 
to item to row to column D. Now if I was really building this, I would have to just type goods available for sale all over here in A at first because I wouldn't know how many columns I was going to need to use. And I would just enter it and then I would center and merge it at the end after the um, spreadsheet was finished. You can't merge and um, center and merge beforehand or it, you can't change the sizes of any columns and you sometimes don't know how many columns you're going to have to center over. So um, again, center and merge is on the home tab up here and uh, it's right above alignment and it's, it's just to the right of alignment. So where you see the alignment section of the um, home toolbar, you'll see center and merge. So I would do that. And then I'm asked to do the um, ending inventory um, for uh, FIFO and then to do the cost of goods sold for FIFO. So I'm going to have this cost of goods available because my cost, my equation does not change all the way through cost of goods available. And um, I've set this up as a data table so I can use that to calculate the rest of these inventories that are coming. So then as I go on across, I'm going to bring FIFO over here for us. And we've got FIFO inventory, FIFO inventory, and we're going to need to know the number of units, the price, and the cost. And for uh, FIFO cost of goods sold, we're going to need to know the units, the unit price, and the total cost. So um, we're going to be setting these up by doing um, FIFO ending inventory, um, bold, the underline of the text only, and centered and merged across F, G, and H. FIFO cost of goods sold, the same thing, the title, all in bold and um, centered and mer uh, underlined and then centered and merged over I, J, and K. Then we would put in these um, headings and notice that right now we're putting units on line 5, unit price on line 4 and 5, unit cost on lines 4 and 5, and then repeating that pattern. And then we're entering um, what we know about um, this particular inventory. So if we look back over here and we have um, the number of units and we're wanting to look at this ending inventory, if I want to calculate the number of units, then what I have to do is say take um, what's here, the total units available were B9, so I'm going to want this to equal the sum of and you might be able to see it up here at the top, B9 minus three hundred and thirty because it told me that I sold three hundred and thirty units. So right here under uh, event number three says sold three hundred and thirty units. So if I had four hundred and thirty units available altogether here in B9 and then I sold um, 330 of them, I would take B9 minus 330 and it would tell me that I have 100 units left in my ending inventory. Now this is FIFO, so the first things in, the 15 and the 16 are all gone, but the $17 price is still there. So I want um, this to um, equal, and I see that I didn't get that one changed, I want this one to actually equal, I'm going to show you how to do that, this price, C8, and I'm going to do enter, and it'll put that $17 in there for me. And um, I thought that I changed all of these, and I'm, uh, I maybe just missed that one. Now this one, um, the cost of the sale, the cost of the ending inventory of all of these uh, seven, of these 100 units that are left is going to be F8 right here times G8 right here to get $1,700. And so this formula up here is F8 times G8 to get $1,700.
Now, to sum these aren't very hard because I only have one number in them, so I can just make it equal to that cell, and it's the sum of that one cell. Um, but it might not always be the case that I only have that simple of an inventory. So then, for the cost of goods sold, try to bring this back just a bit. Can't quite do it as nicely as I would like to. Mostly because of this merge right up here. It's very hard to get that. So, we're going to um, look at this cost of goods sold. Now here, I have um, this is the cost of the goods that were sold. So the $15 units were sold, the $16 units were sold, and some of the $17 units were sold. So the first 150 were all sold. So that's going to be equal to B6. And then um, the $16 units were all sold. So that's going to be equal to B7. And then of the um, 160 units that were um, in B8, um, some of those units were sold. And so now I want to um, subtract the amounts that were left in the ending inventory because they're still with us. So the difference between the 160 and the 100 that are still here is going to be the amount that's in the cost of goods sold. So this is going to be B8 minus F8. And so now we have 150 units, 160 units, and 60 units. At This is going to be equal to um, C6, the $15. This one's going to be C7, the $16 the $15, the $16, and the $17. Now, again, I'm going to click over here and you'll be able to see it. Get it over here far enough now and it'll be away from my head. Um, so now we'll have the 150 units. The 150 units times $15. So in here I have I6 times J6. And I have I7 times J7 and I have I8 times J8. And that will be the multiplication for um, the, the quantity of goods. And I will sum those here to get the total units sold. Now, um, I told you that there was a proof or a check. And so this check is put in here for you to see. And um, the first check is EI plus cost of goods sold. So we're wanting the equation to say EI. So here we have um, we have the 430 units the ending inventory plus the cost of goods sold. I'm sorry, I said that as if it was a cell, and that's what I was thinking and in my mind when I got silent there a minute. My mind said, no, E1 doesn't work because that's where I have names now. So it's ending um, inventory plus cost of goods sold. So um, we're going to add those two together, and that's going to be our total units available right here. And then ending inventory uh, plus cost of goods sold in dollars is uh, our total cost. So there we have a check that our um, inventories are correct. So as we look at this um, ending inventory and um, ending inventory in units and goods in units, those two will add up to make 430 and that checks with the units we had at the beginning. And then as we look at these two again, as we take the dollars and add the dollars, we'll get this total cost, and that will equal back to double check us on our dollars being correct. So this is how we use this data table and this cost of goods sold and ending inventory allocation. Remember, we're splitting the goods available into those two parts. We add these two parts back together they equal what we started with. And so that's a proof that our amounts were right. Now, 
I've, again, I've just replicated all of these for you and left them in here. If you were doing this on your own, you would have to know I've got to replicate this same setup, but with LIFO, I've got to do inventory and cost of goods sold, and with weighted average, I have to do um, ending inventory and cost of goods sold. Now, um, to help you, I gave you the unit count, so you would, because you're brand new at this, um, I want you to remember that we always use the same ending inventory. So the ending inventory is always um, B9 minus 330. So B9 was the goods we had available and minus the goods we sold. And the difference between what we had available and what we sold has to be what's still with us in the ending inventory. So here it's B9 minus 330. And I put this one up at the top because I think you'll be working there with LIFO, but I put this one at the bottom because I think you'll be working there with weighted average. So you can do it any way you want to, but I do want you to know that you always are working with that same 300 units. Now then what you have to do is you have to look at this data table and begin to say last in, $17, were the first out, so those were sold first, so that 100 units had to come from the oldest things I had on hand because these are sold and these are sold under LIFO so the $15 units are what are left in the ending inventory. But if that's what's left in the ending inventory is the $15 units, then when I get over here to the what was sold, all of the $160 and $17 were sold, all of the $16 at $120, uh, the 120 units at $16 were sold, and 50 of the 150 at $15 were sold. So I have to use all of those numbers with these cost of goods sold calculations. Now the average method, you're going to calculate this average price, and then you're going to use this average price for both the ending inventory and for the sales. So the average price, the average unit price, once you calculate that, you're going to use it for the um, ending inventory and for the unit price for the sales. So you'll, I'm leaving you to do those calculations on your own without entering them for you, but to show you how to do that. And then um, the last part of this problem, it says in rows 13 through 31, compute the amount of net income and net cash flow from operations. Now they show you how, they give you this in the book, so I put it, uh, it's down here for you, it's, you don't have to type it in. I want you to be sure that you could type it in. I want you to be sure that you could replicate this by typing. Now the income statement is centered on the um, line 16 in the A column. Um, FIFO is in the B column. LIFO is in the C column, weighted average is in the D column. Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus operating expenses gets us to income before tax minus 30% tax obligation gets us to the net income. And now um, you need to uh, put that in over here. Now I'm going to go through and show you how to um, put that. This is in uh, cell K9. So when you go up here right after the equal sign and before the K9, you'd put in a minus sign and that would become negative. And then you would put in operating expenses and you would put a negative in front of that and it would become a minus sign and that's income before tax, and here's tax, and now you have a computation. So you have to put in a minus sign and then an on parentheses and an off parentheses, and then you get that to be a minus sign. And then um, that's, how that, that's how they would look. Now I'm gonna take all of this out because 
I wanted you to see what this would look like, but the way they have set up this equation, they're just saying take B21, which is this um, net income, minus the taxes to get the income after tax. So they have the sales, and they have the K9, and then here they have uh, B17 minus B18 to get gross margin. And then they have gross margin, and then they have um, B19 minus B20 to get B21, and then they have net income as um, B21 times 0.3 because it's a 30% tax rate. And so then the final net income is um, B22 minus, excuse me, B21 minus B22. So you can begin to see that they're using here the step, the incremental step-by-step -step calculation method. So if you say, oh, I don't remember that equation well, I pointed it out to you quite some time ago. I think it might even be at the very beginning, something at the beginning of four or maybe even in three. So you would, they just embedded the um, reductions, the subtractions, right into the equations. Now what you have to do then is go through and do the same um, for LIFO using the numbers you calculate over here and weighted average. So um, when we look at um, income, we sold 330 units. times $30, and that's $9,900. And you can see that equation right inside the um, spreadsheet. And then um, we have cost of goods sold, and cost of goods sold is over here as K. I'm going to go over here and show you. Cost of goods sold is right here as K9. So I want you to be making this equal to K9. Remember that cell formula reference. I'm looking for all cell formula calculations in here. Very limited, only the information that comes straight from the um, uh, instructions is the only place you can use numbers. Other than that, you have to use cell references. So then you'll replicate these equations right here in LIFO, FIFO, and weighted average. Now for um, Cash from activities, we again have that equal to um, B17. And then we have um, the operating activities being the D7 plus D8. And then um, what we paid for operating expenses for all of these operating activities. You will see in the FIFO the ex the cells to use and then you'll find the corresponding cells for LIFO and for weighted average. So you'll have to do one part and then you'll do another part. So then you get net flow from operations and beginning cash is all you have because you don't have any other investments. And then you get the ending cash balance and by goodness, um, we uh, that should be that would be the cash balance that we would have if we kept track of this. So see our beginning balance came from the beginning inventory right up, I mean the beginning trial balance right up here at the top, the 1,000. And then, so we had a pretty good um, year, uh, increased our cash by $18,000. So that's how you will do each one of these. So I'm, um, I'm really wanting to emphasize with you um, all formulas, you set up a data, a data table like this and then use this data table where you might have to put in the, these amounts of the fixed information from the problem and then from there just begin to do your calculations and get um, information, get your average costs. Now, um, uh, then you could have another way of doing this is also to put your sales in here and put um, 
230, 330 units times $30 uh, here and get a, a number for sales. That's, that's another way to do it. They don't happen to do that. They give it to you right here in the equation, um, which is fine with me. I want you to begin to really use cell formulas and reference, cell references, cell formulas within your own spreadsheets. That's what I'm interested in right now. I know I'm not asking you to create your own spreadsheets from scratch, but it's that I still want to give you more practice with cell formulas and cell references. And in a couple of weeks, I'll get back to you doing labels and you setting up um, the tables because I have a lot of confidence in your ability to read what it says in this book and replicate that by typing. So I know you can do that. I'm more interested in building up your experience with um, data tables, using the cell formulas then to do calculations and the cell references to move those numbers throughout the rest of the analysis. Well, I hope you like this problem when you get there. I think um, it's, a, it's a, a, a really serious, legitimate problem that you could face and have to create um, as a college graduate manager. So um, welcome to the world of Excel, Excel formulas, and cell references.